Well, I'd like to welcome Aaron Marquise, the Executive Director of the Contemporary Circus and Immersive Arts Center based here in Troy, New York, to these sessions um, hosted by the Art Center. Welcome, Aaron, and thank you for coming. Oh my gosh, thanks for, for having me in my own house. For this I know. Video. We probably should have masks on just for the heck of it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, let's start at the beginning. How did you get into circus? What led you there? Talk a little bit about your background. I grew up in the performing arts. It's everything I've ever wanted to do. Uh, I don't know where that actually started, but I remember one of the first theatrical experiences I ever had was seeing Kathy Rigby in Peter Pan at Proctor's. And from that day forward, I was hooked. Wow. Um, I came to a circus through a friend of mine who actually is also a Troy resident, Sean Fagan, who mm -hmm. runs Circus Theatrics. It's an after school and summer program teaching circus arts. And I worked with him in a play at the former New York State Theater Institute, which was also here in Troy, and ended up doing summer camps with him and just really got hooked on circus. And uh, even before that, I had seen Cirque du Soleil as a young child and always wanted to do that, not knowing that that was something that you could do. Mm. And when I was in my sophomore year at Marymount Manhattan College in New York, I was doing a public speaking course and decided to talk about circus because it was so prevalent in my life and came across this website for a school in Montreal called the National Circus School. And I said to my friend sitting next to me in the cafe, gosh, I'd love to go there. And she said, why don't you? So two weeks later, I was calling my, my dad and my grandmother saying, I'm going to drop out of college and audition at the circus school. <laughs> what every parent loves to hear. I know, right? That is the call that every parent hopes for. Yes, my son's going to drop out of college and become a clown. <laughs> you know, I've seen a couple of your performances. One, um, I had the pleasure of being invited to a friend's house for dinner one night, and you were our waiter. I and I understand this was a, a type of fundraiser that you did. And I wondered, was it successful? It was, it was very successful, not only financially, but just as a friend raising capacity yeah. was something that we were focusing on to meet folks like yourself who I hadn't had the pleasure of until that evening, really. We may have crossed paths, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, and Ogar Son was the name of the performance and we, we decided to host an immersive dinner party for, for a couple of hours a night in someone's house in Troy throughout the, the city and people would be invited, 12 people at a time, and for two hours I, in my clown persona, served dinner as the waiter with many successes and many failures, but it was a whole three course meal with, with beverages and it was a great experience for me. Yeah, and it was a great experience as an audience member. I just, I had just a hoot of a time. Oh, really had fun. And, this, and that was the hope is that we got to connect strangers over food and laughter. That was the, the impetus for starting that, that performance. And yeah. we, I love doing it and the organization, the CCIEC loves putting it on and we hope to continue to do that. The, the other performance I saw, I, actually I think I've seen two other things that you've done. One was in um, North Troy on the on the park? Yeah, on the, the bike path. On the bike path. Yeah. And it was in conjunction with an activity. It was... Uh, the Call of Duty Ramble. Yeah. Yeah, that's before, it. this was before the CCIXC existed. It was right. under a previous project that I had started, which was my own production company to try to get something circus-related happening in Troy. And we were brought on to, to bring some artists to a particular part of the path. and and bikers would arrive and they would see a juggler and then they'd keep going a little bit and they'd see an aerialist on a, a stroke. Yeah, it was great. It was a lot of fun for us too. I love yeah. that immersive experience. Yeah, and to just kind of, it was a complete surprise and we just kind of happened upon it. And it was like such a treat. Yeah, and that's, I love moments like that where you are finding performance, particularly with Ogarson and the, the bike path, that you're finding them in 
places that you wouldn't normally see. Before. Right, right. Same for roadkill in the park. Correct, yeah, so in, in Prospect Park, it's another great example. It's certainly not in Troy or the Capital Region where you find circus in a park, but that is a, a program that we love to do and it's free for the community to come and attend. And that's important too, that we're, we're providing an opportunity for the arts to be experienced no matter what your financial situation is or, or where, what your background is, that you can come into a public park and experience circus. And it worked so well. And it, it, you produced that, correct? You didn't perform in it. Correct. So Roadkill was a part of a program that we've started at the CCIC called Artist First, where we work with a specific artist on their artistic concept to mm -hmm. help produce it. So our vision with the program and what we, we work on executing is providing artists with opportunities to understand the producing process uh -huh. and, and what it takes to market a show and the financial part of it and the fundraising and the the writing of the show and and how to bring it not just creatively but um but on a business level to life because there aren't many resources for circus artists to do that typically circus artists are hired by a major company like a Cirque du Soleil or a Cirque de Loise as an artist but when they finally step out and go I have an idea Sometimes they don't really know how to make it work. So that's the, the vision behind that program. And that's one of the reasons you kind of went out on your own with the center, because producing is something that you've always been interested in. Yeah, and it, I didn't even realize it until, you know, I was older. I mean, not, I'm not older now, right? I'm quite young and... and <laughs> <laughs> but... You know, I, as I started doing these things, my family members were the ones who were like, oh yeah, I knew you would do this. You always used to get the kids together on the playground and, and assign roles and try to put the show on. And then you'd, you'd have a sit down during a holiday and make us watch your show. And, uh, and it just, I didn't realize that producing was something that I love to do is to bring collabor collaborators to a table and bring something to life, not just as an artist or a director, but on a larger scale. Talk a little bit about how you do you support that work. Is it through grants, fundraising? So, yeah, so the, uh, specifically the artist first, it, this, the previous one that we were able to do was actually because of the, the art center. I was approached to submit a grant as an individual artist to bring this piece together. So we were able to get some funding through uh, the New York City Council on the Arts. Mm -hmm. And through that, we were also able to start to build relationships with local corporate sponsors and, and um, single donors to, to support this project of doing circus in the park. And mm -hmm. that's sort of where we're at in our history right now is not only fundraising, but as I said before, uh, friend raising, making sure that people hear who we are as an organization and what our vision is here in Troy and also throughout the, the capital region and the, the United States where there are many circus pockets but not really one leader of promoting circus as an art form all of us are trying to do it together and we're working so hard together which i love in circus is that you have to work with one another it's very rare that you can do circus by yourself i mean sure there are shows that exist but circus is a collaboration at, at the heart of it all so mm -hmm. that's where we're at. you were mentioning that it, it, circus has a more robust um, reputation internationally and certainly in Canada. It's probably a little lacking in Troy as well. Um, so how, how do you go about building that up and collaborating with those partners and getting the funding? It's a tall order. It is, it is a great question. And if you find the solution, please let me know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's getting an audience to understand what circus is. I think that's where we're at in the U.S. is understanding what uh, what we call contemporary circus can be. So contemporary circus being um, story-driven, theatrically div driven, dance-driven, which isn't where we're coming from in what we call traditional circus. So circus is like uh, a Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey, which right, right. Um, which had animals and was in big arenas. Of course, Cirque du Soleil does their work in arenas uh, currently or where they were doing it before the pandemic. Um, 
but getting an audience in the U.S. to understand what the art form of circus really can become. And I think there's a lot of value to traditional circus. I think we have to acknowledge where we have come from as an art form and keep that a part of the building block of where we want to go. Yeah, but I think it, it's, it's hard sometimes for people to understand how circus has changed and contemporary circus is so different from that stereotypical clown that we're all so used to from the Ringling Barlam, you know, the, the, the circus and how your interpretation and the theatrical nature of your work really takes it in such a different direction. Yeah, I, I mean, the training that I received in Montreal was much more theatrically based, I guess you would say, as a clown, that it was much more about um, connecting with yourself as a performer and the emotions that you have. And I like to say that clowning for me is, is you're seeing Aaron Aaron, but just to the 10th degree as if Aaron Aaron had had 20 cups of coffee and then was told to get on stage, but he still was in control of his body and was able to project the physical work that he's doing um, and not necessarily relying on outer props or gags. I, I find that I'm not really strong with uh, prop comedy. I'm not very good with that. I'm good at telling a story with my body and emotions and being able to connect with an audience just by looking at them and yeah. getting them to see what's happening inside of me emotionally. And maybe this is a good time for us to see a little short clip of some recent work that you did, a piece called Pants Correct. that was performed at Proctor's before the pandemic hit. And so we'll take a little break and show that and then I'll come back and talk with you a little bit more. So, um, Aaron, tell us a little bit about Pants, the, uh, the little clip we just saw. It's, it started in Montreal uh, before I, I graduated from the school. I was working with a costume very similar to that one, and we were just sort of researching what happens if an audience starts by seeing this clown with uh, his back to the audience. Of course, in the, in the video that you see from Proctor's where I'm at Universal Preservation Hall, their new venue, uh, there was audience on all sides. So yeah. That was a total change for me, which was wonderful. And I found out that the, the number still works with the audience. Seeing my reaction 
uh, from my face, realizing that there's an audience behind me and also on both sides. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was a great experience for me. Um, but the number really started with what happens if the audience doesn't get to see the clown right at the beginning. They don't get to see his face right at the beginning. Um, and what happens when he, he sees the audience? How does that make him feel? Uh, and even today, the, the number is changing a lot as I work on a, a newer version of that piece, which is a part of a larger piece that I have, which is my own solo show that I've performed uh, numerous times and it's always changing. Um, but the, the piece is, it's about a clown being excited to be in front of an audience and what happens if you really get to see everything, that you get to see um, the vulnerable piece of him being not completely naked, obviously, but quite down to his skivvies and being in front of the audience and just going, I've got nothing, what do I do next? Yeah, yeah. And I have to tell you, I've, I've seen the, the little snippet that we just showed and the, the, there was a couple of kids that were just, their laugh was just penetrating and they laughed the entire time. It was great. It's, it's touching to, to hear the, the, the kids laugh at it, but it's also wonderful for me as a performer to, to look at the adults and even see yeah. them really laughing at it. Not just laughing at it because their kid's laughing at it and laughing because it's a guy in his underwear, but really understanding the, the little jokes that I have of like getting into a certain position and turning my shoulder and, and dropping my <laughs> head. No, for me, there's no gag there. It's just, it's a physical thing of going, oh, do I look pretty? Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's, you could, yeah, it was yeah. great. Well, um, talk about, is there anything coming up that we should be getting excited about? Yeah, we have, um, we're working on two different projects. Uh, one that has really come in the last couple of weeks and one that has been sort of coming since the pandemic hit. And the, the first one that I can talk about is my own solo show, This Is Not A Test, uh, which is about a clown living in an abandoned theater by himself. And we're currently working on filming it uh, in an empty theater locally and presenting that as a filmed product. So not a live stream, but really taking the time to film it with several different camera angles and providing uh, almost like a 1960s uh, Peter Pan, Mary Martin feel to it. I was just watching it before and getting this idea of, of filming almost on a sound stage and seeing long shots, uh, but a theatrical version of this, this show. So that's what mm -hmm. we're doing. And the next thing is uh, an immersive drive-in experience that follows all the codes of social distancing and, and um, being able to have an audience safe at a venue and to experience the arts in a way that um, feels safe for everyone, including the artists on stage. So that's something else we're working on. So it's been a pleasure talking with you. Oh, it's been wonderful talking to you. And thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Of course, I mean, the Art Center has been uh, a wonderful supporter of, of me and my work as I've started to develop stuff. So it's, um, it's a pleasure and I love everything that the Art Center is doing. And so if people want to find out more about your work and what you're doing, they can go to ccic.us exactly. and find out all there is to know. Media, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we've got a mail list. Uh, that's really the best place to, to stay in touch with us and follow us. And then once you see one of our shows and we can actually shake hands and say hello, please never hesitate to come up to us and, and say hello. Great. Well, thanks again, Aaron. Of course. Thank you. All right.